girls. <laughs> yeah. How are you? So nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Uh, Thank you so much for doing it is this. It's such a pleasure to meet you. Four and three and two and one, one. The ladies of Broad City are blowing up. I met with Abby Jacobson and Alana Glazer in Washington Square Park to talk about their hit Comedy Central show, the real life moments that inspire it, and what keeps them laughing with and at each other. Do you guys feel like you're living the dream? You must, because look at you two. Seriously, I'm so excited <laughs> for you. Thank you so much. That it's is so nice so to meet well. you. Uh, you guys met back in 2006 at the Upright Citizens Brigade, is that right? Uh, kind of came in and started classes at the same time, so it was like we were freshmen at the same time, kind of, right, like within right. this scene, I guess. And did you guys like just hit it off right away? Um, we were practicing once a week at night to try and get better on top of the classes, and we ended up on the same practice team. We did hit it off right away. There's one episode, right, where you like decided what kind of dog you would be. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of dog would you be? Slim pug. <laughs> yeah. You knew that immediately. Yeah, I thought about it before. <laughs> I would be a three-legged mutt because I'd be like a highly respected minority and I'd be all the other dogs' fetishes. And what kind of dog would I be? A Bichon? I don't know what or they're like called. A cocker spaniel? I'm a Bichon Shih Tzu, <gasps> yeah. a Shizong. Yeah. Oh my yeah, god, it's very a Shizong? Yeah, it's very fun. Yeah, oh my it's god. Not very fun. <laughs> How did the idea for a web series come up? I think we both came to a place trying to get on these UCB house teams and couldn't. And we were both kind of frustrated. That, and so that's when you started doing the web show and you were doing, those were really just sketches, right? Like, it was great when we went to pitch because it was like somebody could see the tone right. before, you right. know? Right. I feel like taller and leaner and organic. I just farted. Okay, why do you say this to me right now? When the web show started developing this cult following, I mean, did you guys sort of see, wow, people are really responding to this? Oh, we yeah. like ran, we were like, this is, this is our new second job. This has legs, we have to really just keep making them. And uh -huh. it's like generous of you to call it that, a cult following, yeah. but it really <laughs> was like 2,500 people. We just like had, but I mean, that's, still, that's a cult I think following. that goes like from zero to that. If that was an actual cult, that would be a huge, really powerful <laughs> cult. I was gonna say, it's, it's, it's I mean, I'd be so happy with that, so right? <laughs> um, should we go in? How did Amy Poehler see your web series? So for the finale of the web series, we like, let's do something big. This is probably gonna be our last one, at least Thank for a you. while. Well, hopefully we'll sell this show. We decided to like <laughs> aim for a big person, a big comedian. And um, our friend just mentioned to us, like, what about Amy? Yeah, because she runs, she founded the theater. We've come up with the theater. And it like made so much sense. sense, and we hadn't like thought of it before. We emailed our teacher. And like, you know, just saying, do you think Amy would ever be on our finale? This is the deal. And he said, I'll email her for you. And she was like, I love Broad City. Aww. I would love to like, do it. And we were, uh, we were something like, like open. It just justified the, these, the past few years that we were doing something good. And so she agreed to do it. Ladies, Amy. Amy. Like in the yeah. web series, she's like, Follow your dreams, girls. Like, we just, like, <laughs> it's unbelievable. It's like what we needed to yeah. be materialized so that we could do the next step. And it's just like, but it just really like was. She joins us, and now she is part of the, the, the whole show. Everyone wants to know is where do these crazy storylines come from? Obviously, they're ripped from the pages of your own lives, right? Like the Bed Bath and Beyond obsession. Bed -bath. You come here, you don't come find me in flatware. Oh, oh. Hmm. All right. Oh my God. Planning this takes is unbelievable. This is incredible. Yeah. The Bed Bath and Beyond thing is a really good example because we're. I'm not. <laughs> when obsessed. people say obsessed, we're always like, Oh jeez. Oh my... <laughs> no, like I'm not obsessed with Bed Bath and Beyond really at all. Um, uh, I but love, we love it. Beyond, but like, yeah. we love it. And my right. mom worked there. Yep. Coupon thing did happen where my roommate. I used to live in Astoria, and this was years ago. And my mom would send me all these coupons, and I had a. I had an envelope of the coupons because I could not even afford to buy any of the stuff I wanted. And as I was we know, saving it, they never, never expire. And he threw truly, them away. Which is he like, went through and looked at all the dates. So in the show, my roommate's boyfriend, my Bevers. Right, John uh, Kimberling. Yeah. Uh, throws away this envelope. 
Bed Bath & Beyond coupons never expire. They have expiration dates on them. Yeah, to, to throw idiots off. Solstice is so funny, where you work. <laughs> kind of yeah. equinox slash soul cycle, yeah. right? Yo, Ab. Hey. Got something for you. Oh, OK. Big old clogged toilet in the girls' room. It's pretty bad. You'll know it when you see it. And you actually did work at Equinox. I at was handed out flyers outside the Grand Central location and did like other office duties for a membership. All I wanted was to work out there. <laughs> and the way they treat you too at, right. at, at Solstice, basically. I mean, talk about scut work, right? Yeah, yeah. things change. Um, really? A little. Why, do you get it like to work at the desk? No, I, I, at the end of last season, I got to train my first class. And remember, form is essential, okay? Nice, moving on up. A little bit. <laughs> we try to make sure to keep the seeds of stories from things we've experienced, things our writers have experienced, or friends. We like take a lot of our friends' stories, and people are offering them all the time. I'm like, we'll be like, we are taking this, okay? Yeah, like even major, major through lines, like Alana's relationship with Lincoln is just based on having a, a sex friend that you don't necessarily want to be in a relationship with, but they might want to. Are we dating? What is this? This is purely physical. And my thing with my neighbor, Jeremy, is just about pining for someone and, right. and what that person makes you feel. And we like heighten the way he makes me feel, which I think people can relate to. I owe you one. OK, I love you too. I'm sorry, did you just say something? No, I think that you said, you said something to me. Yeah, I said, uh... Can you sign for a package for me that I'm expecting? And then you said... And then I didn't... I don't think I said anything. <laughs> you're you're I, a thing, I, I man. Might be, I might be. You gotta get the so. beam. Are you as awkward in person as you are on you the show? You tell me. I don't think so. I don't so. think so. I don't think so. I don't you think tell so. me. I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> no, it's really fun to play that. Yeah. That's like my favorite thing to do, to get in an awkward situation on the show. Alana, how is your character kind of partially you, but kind of you times a thousand, right? When we were making the web series, the, the second season of the web series, we worked at what is essentially deals, deals, deals in the show. We worked at Life Booker, yeah. as did our writer, director, Lucia Agnello. And Lucia was Alana Wexler in Deals, Deals, Deals. How come every time I email you, I get an out of office reply that says you're in Mexico. Honestly, I do it to buy myself some time because I am so overworked. We all are. Today I got eight emails. We were both like not the most enthusiastic employees, but, but like. You weren't quite the slacker. No. No, because no, we like had to not... get a deal. The girls are, you know, can be pretty raunchy and you know, smoke a lot of pot. But do you worry about sort of the whole role model thing? And we do have like certain like ethics, definitely. When we're writing, when we're writing, Especially we do have like an, an ethic code. At the same time, we we it's hard because it's, we want to tell these stories. I want to get high. Yeah. Less often we see women with this kind of like platform to have their voice, but I think there's something to being an imperfect role model because it's like women do things that we want to emulate, but also they can mess up. Well, I think you're seeing that more with more women comedians, right, and, and comedies, totally. and it feel like we're starting to accept women and, and have not necessarily have sort of the traditional expectations of right. what is okay for them to do. And we feel that way about our show. We do read reviews every once in a while. Sometimes it's like, why are we being lauded this way? Yeah. We shouldn't it be, it shouldn't be this praised for having a strong female friendship. <laughs> and it's like, that should be every. Why are we not, why is this not the norm? It's kind of ridiculous. What is Abby's skill as a comedian, you think? Okay, everybody knows, <laughs> everybody knows that Abby is an amazing physical comedian. Yes, everybody knows. <laughs> oh, jeez. Do a cat pass. Okay. Beautiful. <sighs> Her physical comedy is, is just delicious. Is that fun for you to do? It's so fun to write something that you really look forward to for like the couple months in between. Like one example is, um, did you see the stolen phone one where we're like going yes. the, When she falls into the person's purse, she goes, oh my god. Oh, oh my 
my god, I thought this was my bad. You like clearly are faking it. It's so funny. Well, I think the physical comedy thing would be true for Alana as well. I think we have very different physical comedy. <laughs> Mine would be like a weird insecure thing where I just fall all over the place. But Alana's is, Alana did gymnastics as a kid. <laughs> and so she can like, just do a, a handspring up on a wall and like, I think that might have been the most like gift or gift, whatever their the kids are calling it from our second season where she twerks against the wall. I think people are so drawn to her character because, and it, it is like Alana where um, she's so um, bold and opinionated and, and uninhibited. And, exactly. You do micro impressions, right? Because of the way that our society's attention span is these days, we have to like keep it tight. So we do these impressions that are um, just the essence of a person. This is my Alanis Morissette micro impression. If I don't spin your shower. <laughs> and then this is my Miley micro impression, which is eerily similar, because I think they might be ser serve the same purpose for different generations. I said, now I got the memo. <laughs> That's good. That's it. <laughs> um, yeah. Do one. I could do a quick Drew Barrymore. Yeah. Okay. Flower films. <laughs> <laughs> it's really fun to do it. Right? Yeah. I have my Wayne one for you, but you're not going to be able to use it. Why not? I love Young Money. I love them. They're like, I love them. They're such hard workers. I like truly love them. I was talking to you about your little Wayne. Um, interviews before. We, we talk about that interview all the you time. You do? Yes. Why? I was pitching a show of um, that we talk about, Katie and Wayne. <laughs> Miss Katie and little Wayne <laughs> living together in just a dingy, in like a broad city, but like Roommates. Miss Katie and Lil Wayne. <laughs> Can you imagine? You guys yeah. are like so on the same page in that interview. You are like bowling. He is so charming. You were like, oh my goodness. He's like so charming. Oh, it's delicious. It's so authentic. It's I like hysterical. when he said, I'm a gangster, Miss Katie. <laughs> yeah. And also, I loved his thing about, like, my father was Dwayne. I dropped the D. I'm Wayne. And you're like, you can't, how can you, you can't argue with the thing he says. You're just like, it's so great. You just, like, let it wash over you. You're just like, I get it. Now I know little Wayne, Wayne Carter. It's <laughs> awesome. So what do you see yourselves doing in five years? Do you hope that you'll still oh be God. working together, doing a show like this? I mean, world we're domination. We're obviously all going to be hanging out still. <laughs> yes. We're going to be here <laughs> having yeah. skinny cappuccinos. We are working on a movie together right now. Wow. Um, we're writing a movie, and um, I think we're just going to keep, we both have uh, projects. That's a project we have together. We have projects separate. Um, but we're really trying to keep an empire going. I mean, Broad City's not gonna last forever, but there's, you know, the next step after that for sure. Well, I'm really happy for you both. Congratulations so on Thank all you your success. Such, and... a, such an honor, thanks so much. <laughs> and then later, we're gonna like have like a partying follow-up and like really be like wasted together. We oh yeah. interview <laughs> yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you two think. Yeah. <laughs> I got it. I have a reputation to uphold, <laughs> sort of. So do we. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's exactly right.